Okay, so let's do the um, hands meditation. Uh, just in the regular way, sit down, lean back, take a cushion in your lap, take an object, whatever it is. Um, notice what's going on in your system, all thoughts, feelings, sensations. Uh, emotions, all is welcome and yeah, close your eyes if you like or keep them open as you choose and bring your attention all the way back to the felt sense in your hands and whatever arise during this little meditation is welcome and Make a habit, bring the attention back to your hands, to the sensations. Kind of training that little muscle of your attention and what we're looking for, what you all know, is this tinglish kind of electromagnetic, electromagnetic kind of sensual sensation in the in the fingertips. And just play around a little bit with the object on one hand or hold the object and with the other hand on it and just allow yourself to find a spot where it feels kind of extra nice, delicious, pleasant, pleasurable. So it feels good for you. The easiest and best way to find it is just get really slowly. And that means kind of slow down by half and by half again and just allow yourself just to be in your experience of your own skin. Nowhere to go, nothing to get, nothing to give. Just because you can. You can find that spot that it's nice. Just stay there. Just feel. Just notice that very little fact that you are in action towards a felt sense of pleasure by choice. So the power of choice.
towards something that feels beneficial for you. And then slowly and gentle, bring your movement to a stop. Stay there for a moment. And just notice what you notice in your body. So that all there is, is welcome, all of you. And then slowly... Open your eyes, orientate yourself somewhere, keep on moving with the object if you like, and bring your attention back to the screen. Okay, I just want to say a few things that came just in my mind where you were all sharing, and specifically what you said, Nicola. You know, the main thing is when I had that the first time taking an object and finding this very spot somewhere and it doesn't need to move around everywhere on the hands it was just like this one little kind of a square millimeter on my fingertips and I found that spot and I was staying there that was just nearly that was nearly ecstatic it was so unbelievable incredible and and the magic that I found is this is like this nerve ending here or this nerve endings here they were just like corresponding with this 
other part, this other nerve ending somewhere in my brain, in my pleasure center. And it was so delicious. And the thing is, this, uh, I've said that so many times with people who are coming into this kind of work, they, you know, pleasure, sexuality, and, you know, gets them through the door. And then they think just like on the other side, yeah, I just want to feel more pleasure. I just want to feel more, th more joy in my life and want to have more ecstatic experiences. And when I then say just like, yeah, you know, just you fire up all these different neurons in your brain by using your hands because there are so many nerve endings in your hands and they're dedicated to your brain. And when your hands get it, the rest will get it. And you have a deeper connection to your feeling center because this is where this is all landing in your brain. Um, then saying just like, you know, when this is getting activated, you think you feel m more pleasure. Of course, you feel more pleasure, but more pleasure is just a side effect. You feel more of everything. And that, does, that doesn't mean you always only feel pleasure. You feel as well all the kind of stuff that is kind of stored somewhere there that is related to um, uncomfortable feelings, you know, when you do that a lot, you know, everything that, that we have been training ourselves in um, diminishing that or putting a lead on top, like, for example, boredom because it's not exciting enough, all that stuff will come up. So many people fight a lot with boredom when they, when they do that. So this is one thing, and that I had a kind of a loop that went into another story I want to share. I saw that a few years ago, a Saturday night show, American TV, about a family sitting on the table and having this negativity contest about bad smell. You know, and they're just sitting all on the table and smelling on the worst thing, just like kind of old milk, kind of just like, oh, just smell that. And they're giving it around and everybody do that. Oh, my God, it's so bad. So, so they just made a sport out of that, getting in confrontation with bad feelings, not having the resistance against them and avoiding to feel, just like going into, you know, and then they're just like sticking their nose in the rubbish bin and then they're just smelling in the old cupboard and in the basement and it's just, it's, it's really bo bad and wrong. And this is stuff, by doing that, all this stuff will come up, will come into the open. And that's the reason why most people who are starting with that, when they actually see, well, yeah, yeah, I just came for the pleasure, but actually there's so much more that I don't want to feel, they're, they're gone. So, so I just want to let you know that it's partly getting in confrontation with the discomfort. And by saying that, there was the next story <laughs> coming up. Have you seen The Matrix, the fourth time, the resurrection? It's Keanu Reeves. It's kind of a complex, complicated story. I just want to make it kind of short. He got kind of resurrected by the machines into life. And he was then put back into this sleeping thing and went back into the matrix living a life that is just an illusion you know and that's kind of a synonym of that what we do here recognizing when we're just feeling that in the present moment that a lot of this stuff in our life is actually an illusion that we have put on top of our perception of reality so anyway he is in this story of the matrix and he has this flashbacks that he thinks he's completely crazy and insane because his reality has all these splinters about that he knows that everything, th everything feels real, everything seems real, everything looks real, but somehow in himself he knows this is just all a big dream and an illusion, nothing of that is real. So he has this kind of suicidal attacks kind of thing and is ending up on a, on, on, on a chair with his therapist. And the therapist was a kind of a super agent from the matrix, controlling him, putting him back into his belief system of reality. Yeah, you have to have a job and you have to have an income and you need to pay taxes and you need to say blah, 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 blah. blah. So keeping him in, in the frame of his belief system. 
and then he was on the on the kind of edge of freaking out and then you see this very scene where he's just like nearly on the, on the on the brink of a psychosis and then the therapist tells him just like okay make connection to your hands make connection to your hands what do you feel what is here now just be aware what is going on feel your hands breathe and relax is all good and and i was watching that and it's just like He's just putting another illusion into this poor guy, kind of fixing, fixing him in the matrix. And then, by saying that, I just want to finish that with the last story, and then I want to give that to you, see where this is going. Because we were talking yesterday about this um, self-pleasure, sexual thing, talking about edging, talking about sensuality, sexuality, addiction, pornography celibacy, um, you know, all this kind of contraction and expansion, you know, in a nutshell about sexual ecstasy. And, <clears throat> and I had a conversation with Diane before, and I shared that a little bit in the, um, in, the, in the webinar yesterday, that when we men have access to this very essential dynamic, yeah, and we learn to translate that into our genitals, so all parts of our skin, and we start to essentially feel ourselves and rising into that place of, you know, we can be in a place of relaxed arousal and this orgasmic expansion. I came to the conclusion that this is just another form of an addiction. And the way how I would define that, and it's really interesting, is that, so I'm single now since half a year or so, and I'm, I'm, and I'm really okay with that, but I'm just pretty much on my own practicing. So there's nothing to cultivate anymore because I'm very much in it. But recognizing that feeling it and having connection to it doesn't, get me into more connection when connection is the opposite of addiction so it's not sobriety is connection but it doesn't get me into deeper connection to myself but not in deeper connection with other social beings and that by definition must be a form of an addiction if i'm not creating more connection with another form of human beings so it's it's really interesting so i ponder on different things in relationship to the connection to myself, the connection to life, without creating a deeper relationship to people that I love and that I have a proximity to. So why I'm saying that, to just loop the story backwards to the Matrix story, I hope I'm not ending up like the therapist who was actually a Matrix agent showing people all this kind of little pleasure inflow tricks and then ending up everybody just like well fuck you're just teaching us just like in a, de a deeper dick hole of addiction so i just want to say that and put that out because i don't know i, I, I like the, con the conclusion and um and i totally agree with the self-love self-care inflow kind of just like that needs to be the foundation first before we can go on, on other realms and if this is not in place we normally substituting our lack of self-love with other people right and then it's a question that's creating an attachment and that is is, is just is just another substitution right um and my my kind of take on on that is the question how much um more connection does this practice of self-love brings into our life so if it's if it's increasing our our capability of connecting it's great but if we just actually think and just like okay i'm happy when my partner's off the door that i can finally touch my genitals on my own then it's literally the opposite of it right and then kind of there's always the kind of honesty and authenticity to ourselves to admit just like is it actually true and uh, is it actually supporting connection? Is it actually supporting proximity and intimacy? And, um, and, and then the question, is there actually a substitution in place? You know, all our other addiction, as I can tell, is just like, so what is about, you know, 
kind of shopping, cleaning, uh, of, of, smoking, yeah, you know, all these dopamine things. This is just even harder, but just like uh, behavioral dynamics, you know, just like that is avoiding literally connection. So when I remember coming into the home of my mother, you know, whenever whenever I arrived, she started to go in the kitchen and do something. Just like, well, what is that about? And then I found myself when I have visitors, I found myself in the kitchen making tea and preparing something. Just like, fuck, what am I doing? <laughs> right? So it's, it's, it's a kind of a question, just like, is it actually true on all levels in a totally self-reflective a reflective honesty to ourselves. It's just then, yeah. Yeah, it's just this interesting. Can I reflect on that? Yeah. So it's an interesting dynamic, you know, when I just actually created the four pillars of relating, you know, it's just like, like the microcosmos as the macrocosmos, uh, you know, as in small, so in big. So the dynamic of the four pillars as well are truths to our individual relationship to ourselves about receiving and giving and the interpersonal dynamics between us and our beloved ones. And this is what I always said in the beginning. If, if, if people don't know how to receive, their giving is always conflated with, with, with getting something or wanting something back, right? So, and then I kind of try to say, you know, the first thing that we all need to find is the first layer, what you just said, Alex, about self-love and finding a deeper layer of just like, well, how do I cultivate that for myself that I'm independent from other people, you know, so autonomy, agency, kind of being self-sufficient and, 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 you know, that, that, that my life is not based on surviving and trying to get the next, I don't know, something so so that we ne literally need to be on this level healthy selfish to receive that is independent from from um anybody else you know just like growing out of home it's just like no i don't need my parents anymore to pay my rent i can actually take care of myself i can go and and and, and i can work and i can just like get everything i need so that receiving becomes the foundation of our being but then it, when it comes to the second step, what is literally the permission thing, so that we, are, that we literally go out and ask other people, hey, is it okay when I do this? Can I do this? And I totally respect your limits here. Is it okay when I operate here without being invasive or abusive or, or um, you know, what, else, what else is going on there? And that's a really, really important piece that when we learn to receive and knowing how to fill up our cup and, and, and knowing how to um, have abundance for ourselves, that receiving becomes really the core function of our existence from a self-sufficient way. If, and this is just my own experience, and I just generalize that, but if we are not capable of turning that around into this generosity of giving from an interpersonal place of we have or we can, that we don't need anything back, this receiving becomes a total selfish um, a, a, a dynamic that, you know, as I've, I've seen in many children, and you, you might know that as well, this kind of little prince and little princess thing, just like, no, I'm not sharing my lolly, I just, it's all mine, I don't want to have more, I don't want to give anything away, I just want to have it all, kind of over. <laughs> what you see in adults when children haven't outgrown this state of me, myself, and I on all levels, right? And then the question, so from this, from this third into the fourth stage, and then into the spiritual realm, it's just like, well, how can I use my capacity to empower others to be in their strength that we then create an environment where we all can grow together, where winning for all involved is happening, instead of, yeah, we are an, a, a, a selective privileged group taking advantage of everything that we can and everything around us is losing. And as we see that in the, in the kind of Western civil, civilized world, so, um, I mean, it's an... It's an, it's an interesting, interesting dynamic. It was, it was just a reflection on that, what you said. I don't know if that resonates or lands somewhere. And how do you think about that, Erica? What's your, what's your line of thoughts? 
it's so it's so interesting so just like putting the word addiction back in here is you know i just love to be controversial and as well provocative with some terms and just see where i can steer the pot and see where stuff is popping up whether that we can actually kind of juggle with and uh, you know my i would say the mother of all addiction is literally being in in fulfillment with unity with consciousness with 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 the divine you know just like this is where we all want to go back and then you know after altruistic sharing our gifts with the world we just want to merge into oneness with the world kind of the 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 god definition if you want to say so this is what i what i literally would say about that if that's true i don't know when i die i will figure out but um yeah this is really interesting because when i when i was when i was, if i would speak truths from the core of my being i would say this masculine part in me whatever that is you know but when when we talked about yesterday and and I, and uh, about this ecstatic state and when we talked about last time about edging and what this is this this multi orgasmic state I could say so the masculine side in me when I'm when I'm in there and I'm going into this deepest state of feeling myself and activating and going into this place is absolutely peaceful silent nothing is absolutely completely as I, I described that yesterday it's just like you, you know you have this cloud ceiling and then all of a sudden you just grow over this cloud ceiling and you stick your head on top of that and then you recognize it's like oh my god it's actually really nice and silent there's nothing to do nowhere to go it's nothing to get it's just absolutely delicious beautiful perfect as it is present moment awareness nothing else bang chick chick and then we just go back just like oh yeah what's what's the time i need to go to work and what else is going on and then there is this feminine side in me that has this this you know this this divine slut this greedy juicy horny delicious kind of lustful creature that just want to just like devour everything that is turning me on into this place of just like yeah just bring it on what else is there i can play with kind of thing where where, where i can have this multi-orgasmic ongoing waves there just like literally flow forever as long as my physical body is capable of just like following this vibration in the grid and i can just like whoa let's fly this is absolutely crazy let's go there as long as I possibly can. I do yoga and work out and eat healthy and just try to stay in connection that I can stay there as long as I possibly can. You know, so, so, so this masculine and this feminine way in combination, it's a really interesting thing, specifically when it comes to proximity, when it comes to engagement with another person. And that's the question, if I cannot use both sides of being present and in this energetic expansion and, uh, and, and radiation, if I cannot connect with the other person in the place of being in tuned and feeling into that what's going on, then I'm just a selfish prick and I completely lost the plot. <laughs> this is what I would say. <laughs> no, I think I, th I think this is that's, that, that's very related. You know, Sana and I, so, so we are the closest companion when it comes to the sport of personal growth, you know. Just like when it comes to where can I challenge myself with something that kind of stings, where is ego going on, where am I not willing to be authentic and share truth and authenticity. Sana and I, we are... We, we, you know, what, what, whatever hurts, go that way and figure it out. That, because this is where, where some gold is to find. And uh, I had a friend and teacher a few years ago who said, just like, Matt, I think you are a little bit addicted to drama. <laughs> So it's just like, okay, so, so where can I go? You know, it's a little bit like this. Um, uh, so we are all to a degree, you know, dominant, surrender, masochistic and submissive. And, and but, but one specific thing is um, 
uh, I just figured that out that I have kind of a tendency to um, being masochistic yeah? in, a, in, a, in proximity with other people to figure out how far do they go in causing pain and how much pain can I allow myself and then I ask myself this is not really <laughs> supportive for connection it is, it, it is a little bit of an addiction to drama to see how far or how low I can go what the loop was behind that it, it's not really conceptual the way how I explain that but what I figured out on one point when it comes to this addiction to drama and trying to find what is, you know, it's a little bit like, okay, sniff on old milk and you don't know, just like on old socks and just like what stings and just like, just why not to find things that are nice in life? Why not to find the things that, that, that are relatable, that are connective and kind of an easy and organically kind of functional? And, uh, and I think it can be to a degree an addiction of spiritual growth you know find you know either we just we just hunting for the bliss state we hunting for the transformative ecstatic realization or we just do the opposite and just digging in the mud and just trying to figure out what stings to find a kind of a hidden kind of thrown away part of ourselves, you know, like the Freud kind of thing, kind of you just have to uh, look in your shadows instead of f imagining figures of light to get deeper layers of self-realization. And when I came to that point, and it's just ages ago, but it just flips back again and again and again, that what is searching, so in spirit to search for transformation, that what is searching, that's what you're looking for. And searching is a neurological state in the brain. It's a little bit like hunting. It's a little bit like searching for food or, you know, searching is a survival mechanism. But that what is searching is that what you're searching for when the searching find itself is the same thing as if, you know, doing this awareness exercise, bring attention back where attention is coming from. And all of a sudden you just drop into this space of openness. And when you arrive there, uh, then what? I've been in Pune, you know, I've, I've, I've been in all the spiritual scenes for many, many years figuring out answers that we're all searching for in life and finding deeper layers of truth in ourselves. And, as, and I saw a group of people who were related to one of the students of Osho, her name is Dilano. Yeah, so she has her own little kind of gathering points of enlightened people because she is an enlightened one. She said, people say, she, you know, because kind of, and I went to one of her satsangs and I met some people there. And then I saw them later sitting in a cafe, kind of being in, stuck in the, in a place of present moment awareness without having any relationship to anything in life whatsoever. And they, 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 they look like as if they're waiting for a bus that will never come. And in, in, in spiritual terms, that calls the satsang prison. You know, people sitting in a place where they actually have stopped, with, like you said, with curiosity into life and reality and asking questions. Realizing stuff that, well, I have no clue about, you know, the I don't know about the I don't know. I have, I have no clue about so many things. And if I would recognize everything that I could learn that I haven't learned in this lifetime, I would probably say I'm a completely dilettante and I have no idea, no kind of ahnung about anything. You know? <laughs> it needs to be applicable, repeatable, provable, livable, <laughs> functional, otherwise. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's so simple in my world and uh, you know like you said Erica when it's just when it's activated once it's there and when you w when it found you or, it, or you found it, it's just like well you can't really lose it and even if you don't do it for a while and you just tap back in it's just like the, the kind of neurological pathways there they are just like clicking straight back in and you know and I've done so much stuff in my life about spiritual awakening and uh, personal growth and therapy and you know and you can name it you know literally all of it but this little piece here 
that has become the foundation of literally everything I'm building on. It's just like I've been digging a hole through all this spiritual self-proclaiming ideologies and kind of pulling all this experience underneath and create a new foundation of embodiment uh, um, and and this is a, this is a spiritual practice to me you know it's, and and i don't know if I, if i if i if i ever find a better one or a deeper one but this is this is this is a total life and game changer for me maybe i sometimes have an idealized expectation that I hope that humanity is waking up to themselves and realizing that <laughs> as a foundation. <laughs> But that maybe after my lifetime. All right, that was it for today. Thank you so much for joining and uh, uh, spending time here with us. If you would like to be part of this call, I wholeheartedly invite you to uh, click the link in the description and join the academy so we meet every monday 7 p.m central european time for uh, 90 minutes and you can ask your questions and be part of the uh, conversation um, please like and subscribe and all your questions are very welcome in the comments and uh, i would love to welcome you in one of the calls and uh, have a wonderful day ciao